Srimad Bhagavatam Translated with commentaries by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada Canto 1, Chapter 9 The Passing Away of Bhishma Dev in the Presence of Lord Krishna Text 28 Then he described the occupational duties of different orders and statuses of life, citing instances from history, for he was himself well acquainted with the truth. Purport Incidences mentioned in the Vedic literatures, such as the Puranas, Mahabharata, and Ramayana, etc., are factual historical narrations which took place some time in the past, although not in any chronological order. Such historical facts, being instructive for ordinary men, were assorted without chronological reference. Besides that, they happen on different planets, nay, in different universes. And thus the description of the narrations is sometimes measured by three dimensions. We are simply concerned with the instructive lessons of such incidences, even though they are not in order by our limited range of understanding. Bhismadev described such narrations before Maharaj Yudhisthira in reply to his different questions. Text 29 while Bhismadeva was describing occupational duties, the sun's course ran into the northern hemisphere. This period is desired by mystics who die at their will. Purport The perfect yogis or mystics can leave the material body at their own sweet will at a suitable time and go to a suitable place desired by them. In the Bhagavad Gita 8.14, it is said that self-realized souls who have exactly identified themselves with the interest of the Supreme Lord can generally leave the material body during the time of the fire god's effulgence and when the sun is in the northern hemisphere and thus achieve the transcendental sky. In the Vedas, these times are considered auspicious for quitting the body, and they are taken advantage of by the expert mystics who have perfected the system. Perfection of yoga means attainment of such supermental states as to be able to leave the material body as desired. They can also reach any planet within no time without a material vehicle. The yogis can reach the highest planetary system within a very short time, and this is impossible for the materialist. Even attempting to reach the highest planet will take millions of years at a speed of millions of miles per hour. This is a different science, and Bismadev knew well how to utilize it. He was just waiting for the suitable moment to quit his material body, and the golden opportunity arrived when he was instructing his noble grandsons, the Pandavas. He thus prepared himself to quit his body before the exalted Lord Sri Krishna, the pious Pandavas, and the great sages headed by Bhagavan Vyas, etc. All great souls. Text 30 Thereupon, the man who spoke on different subjects with thousands of meanings and who fought on thousands of battlefields and protected thousands of men stopped speaking and being completely freed from all bondage, withdrew his mind from everything else and fixed his wide open eyes upon the personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna, who stood before him forehanded, 
dressed in yellow garments that glittered and shined. Purport In the momentous hour of leaving this material body, the glorious example set by Bismadev is the important function of the human form of life. The subject matter which attracts the dying man becomes the beginning of his next life. If, therefore, one is absorbed in the thoughts of the Supreme Lord Sri Krishna, he is sure to go back to Godhead without any doubt. This is confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 8, 5 through 15. 5. And whoever at the time of death quits his body, remembering me alone, at once attains my nature. Of this there is no doubt. 6. Whatever state of being one remembers when he quits his body, that state he will attain without fail. 7. Therefore, Arjuna, you should always think of me in the form of Krishna and at the same time carry out your prescribed duty of fighting. With your activities dedicated to me and your mind and intelligence fixed on me, you will attain me without doubt. 8. He who meditates on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, his mind constantly engaged in remembering me, undeviated from the path, he, O Partha, Arjuna, is sure to reach me. 9. One should meditate upon the Supreme Person as the one who knows everything, as he who is the oldest, who is the controller, who is smaller than the smallest, who is the maintainer of everything, who is beyond all material conception, who is inconceivable, and who is always a person. He is luminous like the sun, and being transcendental is beyond this material nature. 10. One who, at the time of death, fixes his life air between the eyebrows, and in full devotion, engages himself in remembering the Supreme Lord, will certainly attain to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 11. Persons learned in the Vedas who utter omkar and who are great sages in the renounced order enter into Brahman. Desiring such perfection, one practices celibacy. I shall now explain to you this process by which one may attain salvation. 12. The yogic situation is that of detachment from all sensual engagements, closing all the doors of the senses and fixing the mind on the heart and the life air at the top of the head. One establishes himself in yoga. 13. After being situated in this yoga practice and vibrating the sacred syllable Om, the supreme combination of letters, if one thinks of the supreme personality of Godhead and quits his body, he will surely reach the spiritual planets. 14. For one who remembers me without deviation, I am easy to obtain, O son of Prita, because of his constant engagement in devotional service. 15. After attaining me, the great souls, who are yogis in devotion, never return to this temporary world, which is full of miseries, because they have attained the highest perfection. Sri Bhishmadev attained the perfection of quitting his body at will and was fortunate enough to have Lord Krishna, the object of his attention, personally present at the time of his death. He therefore fixed his open eyes upon him. He wanted to see Sri Krishna for a long time out of his spontaneous love for him. Because he was a pure devotee, he had very little to do with the detailed performance of yogic principles. Simple bhakti yoga 
is enough to bring about perfection. Therefore, the ardent desire of Bhishmadev was to see the person of Lord Krishna, the most lovable object. And by the grace of the Lord, Sri Bhishmadev had this opportunity at the last stage of his breathing. Text 31 By pure meditation, looking at Lord Sri Krishna, he at once was freed from all material inauspiciousness and was relieved of all bodily pains caused by the arrow wounds. Thus all the external activities of his senses were at once stopped, and he prayed transcendentally to the controller of all living beings while quitting his material body. Purport The material body is a gift of the material energy, technically called illusion. Identification with the material body is due to forgetfulness of our eternal relationship with the Lord. For a pure devotee of the Lord, like Bhismadev, this illusion was at once removed as soon as the Lord arrived. Lord Krishna is like the sun, and the illusory external material energy is like darkness. In the presence of the sun, there is no possibility of darkness standing. Therefore, just on the arrival of Lord Krishna, all material contamination was completely removed, and Bhismadev was thus able to be transcendentally situated by stopping the activities of the impure senses in collaboration with matter. The soul is originally pure, and so also the senses. By material contamination, the senses assume the role of imperfection and impurity. By revival of contact with the Supreme Pure Lord Krishna, the senses again become freed from material contaminations. Bhismadev attained all these transcendental conditions prior to his leaving the material body because of the presence of the Lord. The Lord is the controller and benefactor of all living beings. That is the verdict of all Vedas. He is the supreme eternity and living entity amongst all the eternal living beings. And there's a footnote here. Nicho nichinam chetanis chetananam eko yo bahunam virhati kaman from the Kata Upanishad, end of footnote. And he alone provides all necessities for all kinds of living beings. Thus he provided all facilities to fulfill the transcendental desires of his great devotee Sri Bhishmadev, and thus the latter began to pray as follows. <laughs> 